There's no doubt this terrible event has happened again. It's been three weeks since the biggest explosion in SpaceX's 23-year history rocked the Massey test site. For a while, it seemed like the whole thing had faded away. But no, the rumors are only getting louder. There's growing speculation that something's off and that SpaceX could be keeping certain details under wraps. Even worse, some believe this wasn't just an accident at all, but a case of internal sabotage, a suspicious deja vu of what happened nine years ago. So, was it just a technical failure or something much darker? And how will SpaceX deal with this issue? Let's break down on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Elon Musk has always been a lightning rod for both passionate fans and fierce critics, all thanks to his bold personality, unfiltered communication style, and his wild dream of sending humanity to Mars. His way of speaking is often provocative, sometimes even confrontational, breaking away from traditional norms. He's not afraid to fire back, even at the president. And while that boldness wins him devoted followers, it also stirs up plenty of controversy. Let's not forget, Musk currently runs some of the most powerful companies on Earth. SpaceX, Starlink, Tesla, X, formerly Twitter, and The Boring Company. So naturally, with that kind of influence, he doesn't just attract haters. He also makes enemies. Real ones, including powerful competitors and shadowy forces we may never see. And things only got more intense when Musk stepped into the world of politics. As the head of the Department of Government Efficiency, he helped slash U.S. federal spending by an incredible $175 billion. A massive win for taxpayers, but also a big threat to many entrenched interests. It didn't take long before the pressure forced him to step away from the political arena. And now, after SpaceX's most devastating Starship explosion yet, the Ship 36 disaster at Massey on June 18th, many are starting to connect the dots. Was this really just a technical failure, or was it sabotage? Some believe there's more going on than SpaceX is letting on. To uncover the truth behind Ship 36, let's rewind the clock for a moment. At 11.01 p.m. on June 18, 2025, at the Massey test site in Starbase, Texas, while SpaceX was preparing for a static fire test of Ship 36, a critical step toward the 10th flight of Starship, no one expected disaster. One that would end up torching $300 million from SpaceX's budget. It all started with a COPV, a composite overwrapped pressure vessel containing nitrogen, quietly building pressure inside the payload bay. This was the silent heart of the rocket, wrapped in thousands of carbon fibers, designed to withstand extreme forces. But this time, something went wrong. No one knew if it was a manufacturing flaw or damage during transport, but it turned the tank into a ticking time bomb. Boom! The explosion tore through the calm Texas night for miles. The KOPV ruptured, slicing into the liquid methane tank, triggering a catastrophic chain reaction. Flames erupted from within the payload bay, engulfing ship 36 in seconds. Its stainless steel body shredded like paper. The blast damaged key infrastructure at the test site, including fuel lines and the static fire stand, setting back the Starship program significantly. Although SpaceX and Elon Musk officially stated the cause was a faulty COPV, something strange happened just a few days later. On July 5th, witnesses at McGregor site saw thick white smoke pouring into the sky, and moments later, a black object was blasted high into the air. Most believe it was part of a secret COPV test, possibly aimed at recreating the failure that destroyed Ship 36. And judging by the intensity of the test, SpaceX may have found their answer that day. What's unsettling is how much this situation mirrors the sabotage drama that hit ULA nine years ago. But before we dive into that, a new report is raising eyebrows. Just days before the Ship 36 explosion, a SpaceX employee posted on X raising concerns about safety practices. He claimed that SpaceX had been hiring local workers on a temporary basis, many of whom lacked experience or any background in aerospace. And according to him, they had been violating strict COPV handling procedures. He described careless behavior, like deliberately slamming the COPV tanks against the mounting brackets during transport. Even after being reminded to follow the rules, they stuck to bad habits, joking around on the job and blatantly ignoring safety protocols. And how did he know all this? 
because he was one of only two certified COPV inspectors on site, directly responsible for evaluating the condition of each tank before and after installation inside Starship. His job was to log impact reports, assess potential damage, and ensure every COPV met safety standards. But after he flagged these unsafe practices, something strange happened. He was suddenly banned from accessing the payload sections of two starships. Frustrated, he shared his story publicly. Now, was this just negligence or something more sinister? Was someone intentionally trying to sabotage SpaceX from within? That part is still unclear. But if true, it may be time for SpaceX to tighten its hiring standards. After all, the company has a lot to lose, especially if news spreads that internal safety procedures were ignored. Sabotage or not, one thing's clear. Everyone working on Starship needs to take this seriously. Because this isn't just another rocket, it's humanity's best shot at reaching Mars. So, what do you think? Was this sabotage? Drop a 1 in the comments if you agree, or share your thoughts below. Let's talk about it. Many people reject the sabotage theory, arguing that the explosion was actually the result of a design flaw in Starship itself. After all, this isn't the first time the vehicle has blown up. Starship has failed three times in a row, from Integrated Test Flight 7 to Flight 9. But let's take a closer look. Those previous failures happened under extreme conditions during high-speed atmospheric re-entry when the vehicle was being pushed to its absolute limits. This time was different. Ship 36 hadn't even flown yet. It was simply being loaded with propellant in preparation for a static fire test. If this was really a design flaw, then why did Falcon 9, a rocket that's flown 511 successful missions with a 99.4% success rate, suffer a similar issue? Let's not forget, Booster B-1067 just set a new record, 29 successful reuses. That's a level of reliability no other rocket on Earth has achieved. What I'm referring to is the incident on September 1st, 2016, over nine years ago, when a Falcon 9 rocket exploded during preparations for a static fire test at Space Launch Complex 40. At the time, the rocket was carrying the $200 million AMOS-6 communication satellite, owned by Israeli company Spacecom. It was set to provide internet coverage to parts of Africa, the Middle East, and Europe, including a contract with Facebook to support their internet.org initiative. During fueling operations ahead of the test, disaster struck. The explosion originated in the rocket's upper stage, unleashing a massive fireball followed by a series of violent secondary blasts. Within seconds, both the Falcon 9 and the Amos 6 satellite were completely destroyed. Interestingly, the sound of the explosion wasn't what most would expect. According to Professor Daniel M. Nosenchuk of Princeton University, the blast didn't produce a typical detonation shockwave. Instead, it sounded more like a rapid fire event, a sharp whoosh rather than a deep boom. This unusual signature sparked intense debate. Was this truly an accident? or something more deliberate. Some even suggested the possibility of external sabotage. Nothing like this had ever happened before to what was considered the world's safest rocket. The lack of a clear explanation sent SpaceX engineers down a rabbit hole of theories, hundreds of them. One of the most shocking, that a sniper, possibly hired by a competitor, had fired at the rocket from a distance. The idea was so compelling that even Elon Musk took it seriously. Just hours after the incident, Musk began hinting that something may have struck the rocket mid-fueling. He posted on X, particularly trying to understand the quieter bang sound a few seconds before the fireball goes off. May come from rocket or something else. That one sentence fueled widespread speculation. Other engineers at SpaceX started entertaining the possibility as well, especially since there were some odd details that seemed to support it. The initial explosion occurred roughly 200 feet above the ground, on the rocket's southwest side. Coincidentally, about a mile away in that very direction stood a building leased by United Launch Alliance, SpaceX's main competitor in that launch campaign. A separate video appeared to show a shadowy figure on the rooftop of that building, now known as the Spaceflight Operations Processing Center. Even stranger, the timing of the shadow's movement aligned almost exactly with the time it would have taken for a fast-moving object to travel from the building to the rocket. 
SpaceX quickly requested access to inspect the roof for signs of tampering, but found no conclusive evidence of sabotage. We actually thought someone had shot the rocket, Musk later revealed in an interview at SpaceX HQ in Hawthorne, California. We found things that looked like bullet holes, and when we did the math, if someone had used a high-powered rifle and hit the rocket in the right spot, this is exactly what would have happened. But SpaceX didn't stop at the sniper theory. They also considered the possibility of an internal failure. Early signs pointed to something causing one of the helium tanks, located in the rocket's upper stage, to explode. To investigate further, engineers at SpaceX's McGregor test site in Texas tried to recreate the blast. But as SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell later recalled, we were having trouble blowing up these tanks. So they went with a more direct method. We got a rifle, Shotwell said, and we shot it. To their surprise, the signature on the bottle was just like the signature on the bottle that we recovered. That was an easy test to do. While the full results were never made public, SpaceX ultimately concluded that the explosion was caused by a COPV tank failure. In response, they overhauled both the fueling procedure and the tank design itself. The new COPVs were redesigned to eliminate gaps or folds in the liner, and the helium is now pre-warmed before being loaded into the cryogenic liquid oxygen tanks, a critical change aimed at preventing future disasters. Although the final report found no link to ULA, the relationship between SpaceX and its longtime rival only worsened from there. And it wasn't just paranoia on Musk's part. In the early days of Falcon 9, some ULA employees were reportedly seen driving by SpaceX's rocket development site, mocking their efforts, laughing at the idea that this scrappy startup could ever compete. But the rivalry didn't stop at the launch pad. It spilled into the courtroom. In April 2014, after ULA was awarded an $11 billion sole source contract by the U.S. Air Force to launch high-value military payloads, Musk fired back with a lawsuit. He claimed the deal was unfair, arguing that Falcon 9 could fly those missions at a fraction of the cost of Atlas V or Vulcan Centaur. Musk went so far as to say that the American taxpayer is being ripped off. Eventually, SpaceX and the Air Force reached a settlement. The government agreed to open up certain national security missions to competitive bidding, and over time, SpaceX didn't just compete. That victory paved the way for a series of wins over ULA that continue to this day.